This podcast was brought to you by the good people at Audible. Get a free audiobook download and a 30-day free trial right now at audibletrial.com slash nothing but static. Hello and welcome to Steven University. This week, of course, we'll be discussing Back to the Kindergarten. Um, or as to pronounce it as it is written, Back to the Kindergarten. I noticed that. That's just how it's written. I know, it's, it's, yeah. always, it's always been written like that. But I, it always what? bothers me. The more important question, Dan, is have you started drinking? No. Would you like me to start? Hmm. I started a long time ago. Thank God, because... Jeez, nothing much happened, did it, in that episode, so... Mm-hmm. It quite literally drive a man to drink. Really? Interesting, okay. E- elaborate. Well, okay, I'll recap it. If you... <laughs> what happened? Well, should we explain? <laughs> for for those that don't remember from the last episode... Oh, hit my mic, Dan. Uh, Dan and I are about to record an episode of Nothing But Static called The After Party, where after our awards show... Um, which I believe is episode 150 Correct. of Nothing But Static, if you want to listen to it. Um, we The next episode after that is always called The After Party, where we get drunk. Much to Dan's dismay, I started drinking uh, early and started drinking for the last Steven Universe. I'd like to think I was still sense. You know, I made sense. Yes, but that, yeah, was but that good? wasn't my concern. My, I thought we'd get through one Your time. concern was this one. My concern was this one and then the MBS that follows it. it we have three to get through. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a marathon, not a sprint, Chris. <laughs> well, I've cracked open a fourth. Well, wait, now. wait. I'm, I'm currently... There we go. Okay. I've just right. opened one. Are you happy? I'm much happier. So, Peridot's still depressed. Steven's still depressed. Yep. Amethyst and Stephen decide to take Peridot to the kindergarten. Yes. They have some kindergarten chatter. Amethyst now likes the kindergarten because she met the other Amethyst in space, so has more kind of context for it. Um, Which I thought was a nice touch. It is a nice touch. It yeah. implies um, that she always felt daunted by it because she felt that everyone else was better and she didn't quite belong, whereas now she's met them and they were very welcoming to her. She does belong, so the place no longer holds that for her. Yes. But also, Very I nuts. think it was it was this weird empty space, and now she thinks of friends when she thinks of it too, which is also kind of sweet. Yeah. There's a few different connotations to it, which I really liked. And also, yeah, uh, really obviously, nice stuff. Uh, and obviously, Holly Blue Agate treated those amethysts as if they were all defective. Yeah, yeah. Which I suppose rang true with amethyst as well. So there's, there's a lot of layers to it. It's a really nice element of this. But yeah, Karen. But it's just an element. So they <laughs> notice. Some... Guessing, guessing you weren't fond of this one, Chris. <laughs> they know it's I'm fine. It. They notice the plant growing. They decide to do some gardening. There's then a lot of gardening stuff. There's a gardening montage, Ooh. which is exactly what I go to Steven Universe for. Um, <laughs> after the gardening, really, because that's montage. how I found the show. I googled cartoon show with gardening <laughs> montage. With gardening. That's where I, where, where I found um, it. <laughs> <laughs> I, try, I try not to be too negative because people will blame the fact that I've been drinking. Um, they... they will. Whether that's true or not, I don't know. But um, speaking of, by the way, um, we did yesterday. We are in in relation to recording this. The wanted arc went up, and we put every episode up in, across the same day with seven hours between each episode. And my favorite. We knew everyone would assume that I'd fucked up. I've got a history of it. That's fine yeah, yeah. and fine. My favorite though was the person who. Seemed to feel it was possible that I'd scheduled everything drunk and that that's why they were. I mean, I don't know if I've got a, re- have I got a reputation for being an alcoholic. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, like, that like seemed... I know, because <laughs> I'd argue that, like, there's been some occasions, friends' birthdays or whatever, but I'm not, I don't drink as much as I did, like, back in uni days or the, the period after uni, actually, yeah. just after uni when I was in a really shitty job. That was, um, but even then, like, it wasn't too excessive. But, like, this is, like, I don't think it's that... I don't think it's as common as people think it is for British people to just be drunk. (laughs) 
so yeah yeah i think I, this is probably I, I, it's possible one of the few times a year we're both kidding hammered, isn't it yeah it, almost definitely i don't drink very often at all as we'll discover and how quickly i get drunk uh but I don't, i'm not sure if the person in question was kidding or like not but like it did make me laugh so success either way really in my opinion but yeah thanks for that thanks for that um, so anyway, carry on they do some gardening they go back to the kindergarten um the gardening hasn't worked um, so Peridot hits the, cause they, they started gardening because she noticed a plant that had grown. She hits that plant, turns out it's a gem monster. Uh, Amethyst and Steven fuse, defeat the gem monster quite quickly. Um, too quickly, I think. Um, and then just because I was like, oh, cool. Now we're going to see some more of, of their fusion. And then, you know, we didn't really. Um, and then they all go back on the train and, a gar- amethyst and Stephen point out that you know the other plants in the world in in earth are growing and peridot kind of acknowledges this and they agree to garden more um and the three of them share a nice shorty squad moment which is nice there's there's a lot of nice stuff in this don't get me wrong but but you hated it, it <laughs> huh but you hated it. <laughs> I didn't hate it. Not that much. Dude, you must admit not that much happens in it. Like, it's fine. It's a good episode. But when the high caliber of episodes we've had recently and the high sort of, you know, we've had the Connie stuff, we've had the Peridot and Lapis stuff, um, and now we got some gardening. And, like, it was good, but it didn't even... The, I thought the Amethyst stuff, they could have done more. I thought the moment at the end where the three of them connected, they could have done more. I thought the fight with the gem monster where Amethyst and Steven fused, they could have done more. Mm. I just felt they every element of this episode could have had a bit more time with a bit more restructuring. Um, I, I don't... You've hit the nail on the head. Basically, the problem with this episode is there are lots of very good ideas... This show is usually quite good, uh, sort of, when it's got too many ideas, sort of picking one and sticking to it. Whereas with mm. this, it does legitimately seem that they had four or five and didn't really get to play around with any of them to the degree that they would normally do, and therefore it comes across less satisfying. Is, is that... Yes, I, I sub- think that's yeah, that's a fair summary. Yeah. So, with that said, though... I don't dislike this episode. It does pale in comparison to the more focused content we normally get, where they pick a subject and execute it very, very strongly. But I thought it's a really nice sort of straightforward way to have a couple of little things in one episode that had a reasonable start, you know, A to B plot. Harkened back a little bit to early Steven Universe episodes, I would say, especially with them fighting a gem monster um, even if only but they briefly. barely fight it, dude. That fight is like thirty, forty seconds long at the end. Sure, but I see. But I thought that was. I still thought because I honestly didn't expect when I first saw this. I didn't expect that at all. Um, and I think that if they'd spent more time building up to that, you'd maybe seen it coming. I just liked a I, longer fight scene. I don't think you need to build up to it more. Just have the fight scene be a bit longer. Have paradox. If the fight scene's longer and the episode the keeps scene. the same number of build up, then you don't get the shorty squad moment at the end. You don't episode. need as much gardening. <laughs> but yeah, but so then you are you talking don't. about reducing the build up. And well, in that case, take out do the amethyst plot of her being happy about the kindergarten in, in its own episode. Yeah, take out that maybe. I don't know. I just uh, it, the actual. I agree with what you're saying, but for me, the main bulk of it wasn't as interesting as other episodes where they've done similar things. Yeah, that's fair. Um, I think. I think because all the ideas were, I think for me, all the ideas were interesting enough that. I got something out of each of them, even if they weren't fully explored. But so, but, but it, were the ideas interesting? Because I didn't disagree with you. The ideas were interesting. Yeah. Was the execution interesting to you? Not as interesting as it could have been. I don't disagree with you on that point. But what I'm saying, I, say, I guess the summary of what I'm saying is that wasn't as much of a barrier for me as it obviously was for you. I I liked all the little hints we got at several different threads and th- found that satisfying enough to be just like cool 
next please like because none of it's it, you know by being used in this story in this episode none of those threads are going anywhere none of them get closed off in this episode you know we can still explore uh, amethyst's sort of new perspective at a later date in more detail and this could sort of be considered sort of like a little preamble to that sort of just establish it a few episodes before or something you could easily explore um the paradox stuff side of this more in the in, in a few episodes time maybe show her what the result of this is with her gardening um and and then on top of that I, what I, one of the things i really loved most about this episode truthfully the one thing i definitely think they got out of this episode which is the i got really invested in this trying to bring life to an area that the gems specifically damaged because so gem homeworld comes down and builds this kindergarten and nothing grows there nothing lives there they talk about how like you know peridot misses like just bugs and stuff and like not even wildlife visits that area because there is nothing to go there for there's no water there's no minerals there's no because it was all sucked out of the earth and that's a really powerful thought actually because yeah in the past they've said oh these kindergartens would eventually just ruin the earth. They would build kindergartens until the, until the earth was this hollowed out shell of itself that didn't, you know, that didn't, was, was, it wasn't anything anymore, you know. Um, and I think, weirdly, it sinks in more in this episode, for me, than it did then. Because, yeah, that visual of the earth as a sort of rocky husk was powerful. Just that weird thing of like bugs don't even go there. Like there's nothing there. Plants will not grow there. There is nothing to sustain them left in that soil. You know, all of that has become those amethysts that we met. Do you know what I mean? That that life force, those minerals, those things, they're, they're gone. They were drained from this land. And uh, this episode establishes that really well and then gives you this hope that maybe the earth is recovering from that and then dashes that with those plants not surviving so to me it wasn't the, the real joy of this episode really i suppose or the real the real thing that i got out of this episode i should say because all that other stuff was there and not executed or not necessarily executed badly but just rushed slightly because they didn't have enough time to tackle all of it the one thing they did take the time to tackle in my opinion was establishing that and i thought that was really good and i thought that was done really well and i felt like when they went back and those plants were weren't alive i was like wow that really is just strongly echoing exactly why what the gem the, the you know gem homeworld is doing it is so bad you know it's they're, they're coming to these planets and they're, I, they're they're stripping them of what makes them you know give birth to life so they can have their own sort of selfish needs met and their own soldiers made and you know and and that's uh, that's not natural and it's not right um so yeah, I, I I found that element of it really powerful even if all the other elements were underserviced which is 100% true I agree with you, and you saying that gives me a a new appreciation for that angle of it. But I think you've put a lot into that. I think you've had to. I think you you shouldn't have to work quite as much as you have to to pull that from it. You, I don't think that is. I think that's there if you look for it, study it, and take it. But I don't think it's as obviously on a plate as it perhaps could be or other deeper themes have been in uh, other episodes that's interesting i I see i felt it was pretty there because i mean the the, literally the a to b plot of the the episode is that they try to grow the plants in a place that's been devoid of you know minerals and stuff and 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 it just doesn't it doesn't work so i mean i uh, from my perspective it's there but i I see what you're saying it's maybe not as overt as it could i think it's comparable to um you know when you first kind of you first you realize that the shattered gems and these gem monsters are the you know the people that would have fought with the crystal gems, but I, that you kind of have to work to see that it's well, not as. I don't know if they've overtly said it, but isn't the other implication of that? And this is off topic, but isn't the other implication that it's not just the shattered you know remains of Christians, but isn't the the implication that some of these are actually some of the homeworld gems as well? And that the diamonds just took everyone out. Isn't that what centipedal yeah, was sort yeah, of saying? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, because it wasn't it so. wasn't centipedal one of the one of the yes, one of what was so. fighting on the side of homeworld when that the one happened. Stephen tries to to heal. Yeah, yeah. Mm. I liked that it was uh, amethyst coming to Paradox aid. I like those three as a combination. Yeah, shorty squad um, are I always think good it's fun. Imp- 
I think it's important as well, though, to not lose the context. This is four episodes after, you know, Lars's head. And, and I think they've set up so many interesting stories that I kind of... How, at this point of watching it, how many episodes were you giving it until you were going to get frustrated that they weren't actioning some of those storylines that they're putting in place? i.e. Lars, i.e. Connie and Stephen, i.e. Lapis. See, that's really interesting because, I Thank honestly, it it, it, <laughs> um, it it wasn't occurring to me. I, I, I feel like I maybe wasn't paying... Like it, it makes me feel like I wasn't paying attention when I was watching it originally. But honestly, I, I was, I, I, you know, 130 episodes in, or however far we are, I just trusted they'd get back to it and was just quite happy to say okay this is what we're doing for now that's fine i'm sure it's going to go somewhere interesting because it always does like i i at a certain point the show earns my trust if this was if we were earlier in this show's run and the writers hadn't time and time again proven to me that they were capable of always getting back to what they were doing and returning that focus then i'd be concerned if they'd in fact done the opposite and failed me on several occasions, like the writers of Adventure Time, where there have been several occasions where plots had been just dropped forever, um, I'd be more worried. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? I'd mm. be I'd be slightly more concerned about where it was going. But at, at this point, I was just happy to you know happy to keep on sort of trucking with what they were doing. My assumption was that we'd get back to all that stuff because that's how the show has always worked. It's always done several episodes that were really sort of focused on a big mythology thing, and then sort of retreat into something more interesting and character character driven that's not more interesting sorry something a little bit more a little lower scale a, you know a little a little lower stakes um and mm-hmm. i'm kind of okay with seeing paradox struggle to 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 to, to build to, to to grow life on this earth because in a weird way i think it's kind of beautiful as well that steven has knows her well enough at this point to know that the one thing that she could potentially well actually it's amethyst really that initially comes up with the idea isn't it to go see the kindergarten but the kid it's steven i think that jumps on the notion of oh you should try to grow something that's that's what you do because peridot's one of her many roles for the for jim whole world was that she was a uh, a certified kindergartner we know this because the twitter page that they, the writers created for her had that in her bio um so it's so cool that they've tied that to this idea that she loves to plant because what weirdly Obviously, she's been planting stuff at the barn since day one. That's been part of the time she's been at the barn. Like That's always been a running theme. And we've seen the barn's crops around it grow, literally, as the season has gone on. But I'd never actually connected, weirdly, the growing of gems in the kindergarten of it all to the other side of it, which is the, the, the plant growing and the, the farming and why that was such a thing she liked doing. Um, and so... I think to sort of go back to your sort of the question that led me to that point about um, actually God I don't even know how I got there now I was answering a question and I got distracted about about them circling back to all the kind of crumbs they've laid that's right yeah so because I'm getting some character stuff that I know will probably play into later episodes like you look at that Lars situation and you go like. Yeah, they set up for months that he was, you know, letting Sadie down in many ways and that he was a coward and that he was, you know, where does that end up going? Well, somewhere incredible. <laughs> you know, those wanted episodes were fantastic. So then you're seeing all this stuff with Le- uh, with Peridot here and I'm just like, okay, cool. We're laying in crumbs. That I've got to just trust this is going to go somewhere fantastic and that this is all building to something really intricate and interesting. And I, and I wasn't... Uh, and I wasn't against the episode because even though yes there are this is one of the weaker episodes we've seen recently a hundred percent for exactly the reason you have stated but there's still plenty for me to get out of it including the the stuff we've done and i trusted the writers were going to come back to where to 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 it and, and develop it in an interesting way or go back to the stuff that i was slightly you know more interested in in this moment uh at some point shortly i just sort of had to go with it keep in mind as well i'm pretty sure from my perspective, the episodes we're watching at the moment, I think I got them in a batch. I think I got five at once. So, raising the barn and the three prior to it, and I think the sorry. So, from Dewey wins to I think next week's episode. 
Mm. No, in fact, the week after that, they dropped like six episodes, like at once. So keep in mind for, as well, from my perspective, my initial watching of this episode was it was amongst a little batch of these sort of funner, like lighter, not so mythology based episodes. It was among, okay. it was sort of mixed in, so it, it doesn't stand out. It didn't stand out to me on that viewing either as being such a bad thing. I think I just I didn't personally connect to it or enjoy it as much as say Gemcation, which I adored. Yeah, Gemcation's um, great. Gemcation's really. And great. I fully admit that might be watching it on crappy 4G because we haven't got internet yet, and and watching it five siders down. So I I get that that probably played a part in it. But it's just a lot of gardening, Dan, and I just wasn't as into it. And I think I, a lot of the, even even without those stuff at play, I don't think I'd have personally picked up on a lot of the nuances that you've picked up on. But mm. with you having explained, well, if, them you and, if you weren't, if you weren't discussed, if you weren't so fucking, you know, absolutely wasted, Chris, it'd be. Uh... <laughs> I don't think I don't think I'm absolutely wasted. I, no, I, I was. Hope, I, I laughed after no that. One, I was kidding. Obviously, you're nowhere near wasted. I hope no one. Don't give me a complex. I hope no one's uh, <laughs> angry. Um, well, the, you see, you think this is a podcast about Stephen University, but this is Stephen Universe. This has all been building up to me. Just sort of. This is basically an intervention. <laughs> oh, I wouldn't focus on the drink. I'd focus on my master. No, I'm joking. So I couldn't follow through with that joke. Um, I, I remembered that we're on YouTube. Uh, <laughs> Amazing. Wow. Anyway, <laughs> I was going to make a joke about masturbation, but I no, we got uh, that. I didn't no, we... no, you got that. It was there. It was there. That it, does it, you left you left enough there, Chris. Like the episode that does remind like me. Like the actually, episode we just the... watched. You didn't. <laughs> you didn't. Need yeah, to that's lay what I was going to say. And by the, the way, cross. I don't. I'm not not a serial masturbator. Can I just say? Um, but I did love the, that the, gag the at the end. Interventions next week. I'm not, I don't, yeah. I, food, I'll give you. I eat too much. There you go. If you want to have an intervention about that, that's fine. It's a bit too much um, pizza. A bit too much pizza. No, for you, it's a bit too much mozzarella. You put mozzarella on everything. It's a problem. It's too, no, I'll tell you what, it's too much in general. I don't think anything I eat, particularly, because you know me, I'm not like a big McDonald's guy. I'm not a big, like, no, you're I'm not. not eating burgers eight days a nope. week. With yeah, the exception- yeah, yeah you're not, you don't even love KFC that much. No, with the exception of um, bacon, there's not, I don't think, particularly unhealthy food I regularly eat. It's the quantity, like, mm. like you don't need as... Pasta's fine unless you have <laughs> shit tons of it. Um, but we've gone to... What is that noise? There's creaking of some kind. I don't know if people can hear that. Is I it, love that uh... gag at the end where she's like... Um, I I was trying to get over lapis, blah, 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 blah. And Amethyst is just like, yeah, we got the subtext. <laughs> yes, it's a good joke. Yeah, it's a good gag. I think, uh, I, I will say as well for this episode, it's not as funny as some of the other episodes have been. So that could probably not help as well. If you're not, if you're not laughing regularly, it kind of, it, it makes you take in more what it is and isn't doing. And like a brief glimpse at Smoky Quartz feels more of an annoyance in a world where you've not laughed recently. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah, well, well, when when the gem monster appeared, I kind of went, oh, this is what it's going to become. And then to have them fuse into Smoky Quartz and then defeat the gem monster in in pretty much a matter of you know, 40, yeah. 40, 40, 50, 50 seconds, seconds. Yeah, yeah. 100%. probably nearer three minutes for me because I'm a fucking 3G, 4G. But it just... It felt, I was then like, oh, maybe that's not it. Because I tell you what, the whole time I kept thinking, well, maybe they're going to discover some bigger thing, some bigger mystery, some bigger activity at the kindergarten. But that in itself was kind of annoying me because I was like, well, then they're just laying another thread. We've got a lot of threads hanging already. Um, so, yeah, it was. I, 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 I have way more appreciation for the episode now we've chatted it through, I must admit. That happens a lot, I think, with these sort of things sometimes, doesn't it? Where they're like, mm. when you discuss it, if it's if if it if it did a if it did some stuff right and some stuff wrong, which is the case with this episode, sometimes the wrong overshadows the right, depending on how the ratios are built. And when you talk about it, and a person who felt the ratio was leans either way says all the things that were right about it, I mean. I wasn't quite as aware of all the things that were wrong about it until we had this conversation. So I think we've both come to a more neutral place <laughs> because I yeah. felt pretty positive about it. I like this episode. 
and you and felt again, pretty negative gotta, towards it. And between the you, two, we've sort of come to a middle ground, I think. You've got to bear in mind, like, yes, Dewey wins was a bit dodgy, but if you think about it, Wanted, The Bomb, like, this is this is the first meh episode in a long time. Yeah, and interestingly, I think Dewey wins is problematic just because it, it raises questions about Stephen's priorities. Because you sort of go, wait a minute, shouldn't he be going back for Lars, or shouldn't he be going talking to Lars's parents? He's helping the mayor. I know he's guilty, but mm, you know, you sort of go back and forth on that. And I don't know if we really, we tried to talk about that in the episode we did about it, but it was a really, t- it's a really tough t- topic to judge because uh, it's you, you try to second guess the writers and like I don't know, there's it's 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 a it's a weird area with no well, and, solid. And answers. you don't know how much of that is Cartoon Network's fault for like having the fucking eight months in between or whatever it was. Yeah, precisely. So yeah, it's interesting. It's a, it's certainly a valid criticism of that episode though. For people when people say that oh, Stephen's sort of priorities seem a bit backwards here. He should be looking out for Lars's parents or Lars because that's the, that's the main thing that's going on. But um, in terms of other than that, though, you're right. This is a really strong run, and this is certainly one of the I, weaker ones in this run. Um, I tell you what, though, sure. most of that and most of them delaying getting back to Lars is fixed with one line. As Stephen and Connie go off, you have Stephen say, or even when Stephen's chatting to Sadie, you have him say, "Well, Lion's gone." Lion runs off with Connie because then. Do you not think though that's kind of what's Lars. happened? Like we haven't seen Lion. Last time we saw Lion was him yeah, with Connie. but yeah, but you yeah, but you you're fan explaining that to some degree. Like because at this point, yeah, well, I suppose not. you're not because because you see it. But I, you know, I I think you have Stephen acknowledge that you have Stephen explicitly state that he's not ignoring the Lars situation. There's just nothing he can do without Lion. Yeah. 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 yeah what was uh what was the triv on this app triv we get triv already 28 minutes in well you got i don't know if you what have you got other i was just i don't know oh my god chris we'll, 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 i don't i don't get i'm not gonna jinx it because uh, i'm just gonna well, let's just i'm just gonna say it but what well were we focused <laughs> did we just did, surprisingly did, did we just talk about the episode top to bottom without any... We didn't do we didn't do a particular tangent, no. Oh my god, Chris. it was a brief alcohol tangent. But what? But do you have anything else to? I just can't see that there's much more to add on the episode. No, I don't disagree. With this or... really, no, I I don't disagree with you. I just it's just a shame because we've set a precedent for like forty minute episodes. But yeah, you're right. So let's just should we just that's the other thing. If we'd have done ten minute of ten minutes of tangenting at the beginning, we'd be at the point we'd usually do trip. <laughs> yeah, it's true. Um... Right, so uh, first time we've seen Smoky Quartz Bubbler Jam. It's nice, not particularly no, nice. noteworthy, but um, not worthy enough. I, I love, by the way, that obviously they could not afford to get Natasha Leone in to, to do like one line of dialogue. So Smoky Quartz literally says nothing. Um, that's just uh, that, that. That might be one of the reasons that the appearance is so brief as well. Yeah, but if okay, but if you can't get the actor in, then just don't do it. Have them fight the. Thing on their own. Don't, did you, don't fuse. Did you? And this was partly my other thought with the trip that it might inspire a conversation. Did you wish? Do you wish that Peridot had got involved in that fight, and that maybe if she'd have helped in some way in that fight, it would have added validity to her being comforted by the fact that it's the three of them at the end, which is very much what her putting her arms over them on, I... the, on the train appears to be about. I don't necessarily think it would have improved that element of it, but I do think it would have improved one thing, which is that I've been really looking forward to seeing her be a bit more combatty with her new metal powers. Um, because we've yes, seen yeah, that they're getting stronger week to week. So I mm. think it would have been actually kind of badass to see her do it not by accident this time. Because if you recall, the last time she used the metal powers to prove someone, it was a it was sort of an accident. <laughs> it was It was... That's a really good point. She's become really skilled with that power so to actually see that in a combat yeah and i and i guess this really cool it would be and unless they're saving it for something specific which if that's the case then it's hard for us to criticize here from my perspective though as a viewer no, 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 just but if that's it. the case don't show us it really casually like they did when she elevated the piece of metal to take them up well no but we've complimented that though because we've sort of said oh isn't it cool that we can see that she's slowly getting better my point is if they're yeah. saving the battle element of it for a for a specific 
conf- confrontation. That okay, makes yeah, sense. big. As long as fine, then as long as the characters don't go, oh, your metal powers have come along so well. Precisely, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Fine. They have, they have to just acknowledge that. That has, to, that just has to be the thing. But I, I think a part of me wants to see that and see it soon. So because I, I, I as a viewer know that she's become more proficient with the metal bending, as I'm going to call it, because mm. metal bending is a is a thing from uh, Avatar: The Last Airbender, and uh, that's what they call it, and that's what it basically is. Um. Because that it, little hint, Chris, for you, little min, minor spoiler, I suppose, is that the Earthbenders later on realise that many of the materials that make up metal is have got Earth in it, and they there are a handful of Earthbenders that eventually discover that they can manipulate metal. That's cool. Yeah, I thought so too. It's a good show, mm. Chris. You only watched one season. I- Animated though, isn't it? Yeah, so, you know, yeah, not your thing. Um, so yeah, I, I, that's the, my my disappointment is not that it would have added to the ending, but more that I would have just liked to see her use her metal powers. In terms of it adding to the ending, I just don't know if her being involved in the combat really changes it because the ending was more about her coming round to the fact that it, it doesn't stop and it doesn't, you know, their success or failure here doesn't stop at the kindergarten. There is more on Earth. That is, you know, Earth isn't that one patch of land. And when you actually look at the grand right, scheme yeah. of it, it's still because you've got to keep it focused on that because that's what we just spent, you know, ten minutes sort of setting up. So if it had become more about that she'd won the battle, I feel like that might have taken away from that the the message they get to, Fair which enough. is yeah. when they look around at the, the you know the big the flowing fields of of sunflowers that are thriving, and they say, well, look you're focusing on and i suppose that's a weirdly a, a really interesting wider message and this is digging for a for a for a, in, you know interesting themes and concepts they are there but they're, this is really you've got to pull it out but i suppose it's a it's, a, it's sort of a message for looking where you look at things in life sometimes because often people give that advice don't they because like it's like us with the comments i could see a thousand really positive youtube comments on one of our videos but i'll i'll hone in on the one negative one and it's mm. one voice in a million and it uh, but it's yeah the and i've told one. i've told my dad to stop commenting i know he's shit, such a dick about it <laughs> he won't he won't let up no he won't but my, my my point stands which is that like i suppose what the one of the messages of this episode um uh, is you know you can't focus on those negative things you've got to sometimes look at the wider picture and that's lovely and again the the, the battle thing would have maybe weakened that for me mm. still yeah, not one absolutely <laughs> You are still not one over, though, are you? No, no, no. I think no. I think you. I think you're right. I think. I think I. I'm only feeling my big complaint with the battle is that it was too quick, and I. Yeah, it was. In my head, going if Peridot had done something cool, it would have extended it and made it a bit more meaningful. So I think mm. that's. I'm not disagreeing with you, or I don't need to be one over because I think you're right. I think I'm just looking for something to make that a bit bigger as a moment fair fair um the uh flower the lone flower that turns out to be a sort of monster is most likely a reference to the silent princess which is a flower from the video game uh legends of zelda breath of the wild um although i would i would maybe dispute that because i'm pretty sure breath of the wild is pretty recent and i don't know when this episode had in relation to that i would would, would, double check that if it isn't a reference, it is a very big coincidence because they both have very, they have very similar designs this, and they both seemingly grow against sort of all odds. Um, this aired within the year, though, didn't it? It so. did, but Breath of the Wild is... I would yeah. have to check that. In fact, I, I'm going to look that up. Cause this I assumed episode, you this were episode, doing that. Yeah, this episode aired on November the 10th last year. So eight, nine months ago. Breath of the Wild came out in March. But when would this episode have been animated? If it aired in November, Zelda was March. Is that enough time to design a whole monster? That's in, enough time. In the show? Yeah, maybe. Yeah, all right. I'm not so sure because I know that they're quite ahead in when it comes to animating these episodes. Don't, don't, don't. Right. Last week we gave ourselves grief for shitting on the triv. So now you're just trying to prove the triv wrong, okay? <laughs> no, not necessarily. Let, I'm just let the triv be. Okay, let the triv be. Right. I nearly started singing. Then that was. <laughs> well, you are drunk. 
<laughs> I was going to do a let the trib be version of let it be, but you know, we're already worried about Nickelodeon suing us for Doug. We don't want to, we don't want to get the Beatles on I'm our not, case. I'm not worried about that. I don't think anyone cares. Um, just wait till I start playing um, some of the lesser known hits from the TV show, Doug. Because I've, I've still got Are We You, Killer Tofu, like lined up somewhere. What? That's <laughs> uh, See, I can tell you didn't properly watch the show, Doug. In the show, Doug, there was a the, the, there was a fictional band called The Beats. And they wrote two or three songs for The Beats. Um, and one of them right. was that. It's called Killer Tofu. I think it was a song about right. Killer Tofu. Fair enough. Yeah. If anyone can hear background noise, I apologise, by the way. I think my mum and dad have just turned up to deliver a mattress. But carry on. Do you, you want to go give them a hand to that? Or? Nope. Just going to stay here and drink and chat to you. Awesome. Carry on. <laughs> wait, let me make a chinking sound. One sec. All right. Wait, wait. We we'll okay. do it together. Right. Okay. Both pick up two glasses. Right. Yep. Three, two, one. There you go. Okay, right, carry on. Um, yeah. Um, I just say, Je- Jess is there to help them, so I'm not being a total dick. <laughs> oh, like, three yeah, yeah. of them. Yeah, don't worry, guys. It's not just... I, I've not left my parents to drag a mattress up. Uh, you know, don't worry. It's fine. Uh, my girlfriend's out there to keep helping them. It's fine. Don't worry about it. They, 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 no, so- but like... <laughs> Three people's enough. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, three people is enough for a mattress. Uh, as long as someone is repeatedly yelling, pivot. <laughs> Otherwise, be it's fine. Just not acceptable. Um, you know what, how much we annoyed um, when, when we moved. We, uh, I uh, had the unfortunate dis- uh, displeasure of moving with my girlfriend's dad, who is a nightmare to organize anything with because he won't do anything unless it's been thoroughly discussed for 20 minutes. So moving furniture with a man that refuses to move the furniture until we fully discussed exactly how we're going to move the furniture, just pick it up. Um, but we managed to annoy him quite thoroughly because we would yell pivot every time anything was being lifted, just <laughs> dragged downstairs or up corridors or anywhere while we were moving. Did you, did you also do the other particularly British one is to me, to yeah, you, we did that, to me, did that to one. you. He was more into that one though. Furniture. He appreciated that one. He didn't quite like the friends reference because he doesn't really watch friends. Really? Chuckle vision. He appreciated the chuckle vision reference. Of well, like it was 50 year old man. Yeah. Pretty much. Bizarre. Says a lot, doesn't it? <laughs> Yeah, carry uh, on with the trip. Um, yeah, uh, it's not very clear where Peridot goes overnight. So oh, uh, this isn't in the trivia. This is just something that I wanted to ask you. So she's living in his bathroom, so he can't shower and stuff. They they go and they plant a bunch of sunflowers, whatever. Go back home, and then the next morning he's just got access to the shower and stuff. Where's Peridot sleeping now then? Um, I would assume that because gems don't need to sleep, she's just up and about. Fair enough. Not moping. Not moping in the bathroom. Hmm. Fair enough. Yeah. No, 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 yeah. All right. I'll take it. Um, yeah, that's pretty You seem really almost annoyed at the conciseness of that explanation. Yeah, it was, it was, it was annoying because it was, a, it, it made sense. Didn't like it. <laughs> Didn't like it, Chris. Didn't like it one I bit. I apologise. Yeah. So anyway, um, I guess we'll call it that because I don't have any more triv um, and we don't have anything more okay. to say, evidently. No, give me a hint for the next one. A hint? No. Why not? Because you asked. <laughs> <laughs> we've had this conversation. Okay, well, I think we should we should down what we've got no, left in these actually, bottles. I'll tell you the title for the next episode and I'd like to hear what your thoughts on what it might be about. Well, that seems like a more sensible suggestion than mine. Carry you were on. just going to tell us to down alcohol, yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> we, could, we could do that, but we'll do that after we've All done right. this. Um, the next episode, Chris, is called Sadie Killer. Ooh. Now, of course, her name is Sadie Miller. So. Ooh. Um, play on her name. I can only assume that Sadie kills a man. Exactly. Oh, see, Wikipedia again, Chris. Damn it. <laughs> um, I don't know. Um, maybe like Sadie goes. Maybe it's a reflection on her, like character. Like she gets like gothy, gets emo, like you know, Sadie Killer. Like she becomes a bit um aggressive as a Ooh. result of missing Lars, maybe. Uh, see, I, I went the other way. But should I tell you what my theory was when I saw that episode title? Yeah, yeah. This, this is one of the examples where I actually did come up with a theory. My theory was that it was referring to her job. 
What, she kills a load of donuts? No, her job is killing Sadie. Like, it's like, it's her job is making her so miserable, it's a, it's Sadie killer. Like, she is... Oh, that's cool. That's a good theory. That, that was my that was my working sort of angle on it um, when I first okay. saw that title. Obviously, I yeah, will, not, I will not tell you if I was correct or not, but uh, that was what I... Well, that's the direction my brain was going in. Fair enough. That's a good theory, I reckon. Yeah, I mean, it certainly, certainly makes sense with the information provided. Yeah, and like leaving off like the donut reference in the in the last episode. Yeah, yeah, precisely. Yeah. Okay, cool. Right now, shall we down and and wrap things up? Yeah. Uh, what? Well, actually, wait a second. This is I've, a uh, dumb idea. I've got basically the whole drink left. I've got. I've got. Mm, yeah, I, I'd like to say I've only got half, but it's half of a bottle, and of course, so all I've drunk on this second or third bottle, or whatever I'm on. Is the neck, which is the thin bit. So I've still got most of That's the That's same. Same. I've just drunk the neck. Right, good. Yeah, great. All right. So um, and you've managed to do three in this one episode. Yeah, they're, they're yeah, but they're, they're they're not cider. They're the they're the sort of half pinty ones, aren't they? They're the Oh okay. They're the what is it? Like, three um, three hundred and thirty mil coronas. Desperado kind of sized. Yes. Well it's yeah. it's a corona size. I don't know if that's the that's a, that's about the size of Desperado, isn't it? I think so. Yeah, I've got. A, I'm looking now. At a, no, I think no. Desperados are a bit bigger. I'm looking at a desperado bottle filled with sand. Well, how much is a desperado? Uh, hold on. Well, this bottle's from a fair few years ago. I like the way you've not questioned that it's filled with sand. You've just run with that. This bottle is uh, thirty-three cl. Yeah, oh, three hundred and thirty milliliters. Yeah, same. That's exactly the same. Okay, cool. Oh, that's fairly substantial then. So I've had, I've had, yeah, I've had three of those. Well, I'm on my third okay. one, so uh, this will be three. Yeah. For those wondering, um, we went. Uh, f- uh, four of us went to. Um, duh, 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 what's the beach in Wales where Gavin and Stacey was set called? Um, I can't remember. But anyway, Great story, four Chris. of us went to. <laughs> huh? Great story, Chris. Say. No, no, no! What the fuck's that? That's going to bug me now. Are we Barry, down in Barry, this drink or us, what? <laughs> four of us, four of us went. This is a sweet story, mate. Okay. Four, me and three friends went to Barry Island, um, and my friend Ellie bought desperados um, to toast a family member of hers who had recently passed, um, and we toasted it. We toasted them. Um, we had the toast. Toasted it is an appalling way of phrasing that. Um, had the toast, and then I filled my bottle with sand to remember the day. And uh, I it has moved house with me twice now, and oh. now is here in the uh, in in what Jess is affectionately termed the studio, is what we're calling this room because it's where I'll be recording the podcast. So yeah, that is adorable. There you go. Right, should we down these drinks? Sure. So there we go. I've been Dan Doolan. I've been Chris Billingham. And we'll see you next week when we went, when we discuss Sadie Killer. Chris, take it and away. Go on. There we go. And can I just say that at nothing but static.co.uk, episode 151 will be the episode we are about to record. So if you want to know Starting how messy, off, and these get messy, last yeah, year's was, yeah. a, was bad. Starting off in this, this is our starting point. So I, let's down. Yeah, you ready? Mm-hmm. Three. You already started. <laughs> mm. okay. But I really struggled to down drinks. So. Okay, one sec. I'm going now. All right. mm. <laughs> Wait, I've got a bit more. Mm. Okay. Um, I'm still. I'm still downing. I'm really bad at it. That's. That is bad podcasting, is what that is. <laughs> oh dear lord! I tell you what, though, the last time I downed a, uh, I downed a drink it was only about about four or five weeks ago, and I did. I surprised myself, Chris. Someone had jokingly said down it, and I was going to do a comedy bit where I start to down a full pint and then start spluttering after a few sips and just put it down again, and then I yeah. just downed the pint. <laughs> and I that's impressive because I'm still downing. <laughs> That's not really downing at this point, then, is it? <laughs> and, no, this and, is and, and pausing even, to chat. And afterwards, even Nadia was like, I didn't know you could do that. I'm like, neither did I. <laughs> like, I had no idea. 
Right, okay, so wait. Was it amongst the most manly you've ever felt? It's, it's the second most manliest I've ever felt, Chris. What's the first? Uh, when I kicked a door in. <laughs> right, what was the context there? Um, we, in our last flat, the uh, landlord had evidently replaced all the doors with cheap shit, and all the handles slowly broke. And we were lucky, most of them broke, as you know. You, you'll know, Chris, because you, you visited that like, property a few, quite a few times. Uh, a bunch. The handles would break to the point where you would turn the handle and the, 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 the nib sort of wouldn't move in or out because the mechanism would be would, would shatter. Uh, because they were made out of cheap shit, basically. <coughs> and uh, most of them, when th- two or three of them went with us, with them not closed, so it didn't matter. They just wouldn't be able to close in future. So that's fine. The bathroom one, however closed with nadia on the other side to which she started panicking because we couldn't get her out and we were trying with hangers and wires and all that stuff to try and sort of like pulling it back from the outside to try and get her out and in the end i was someone just said we just have to kick it in which to which i said okay i'll give it a go but and then the, literally the person went should i film it and i went no because i knew what was going to happen which is i was going to try and kick the door in i would kick it it wouldn't budge and then i would fall back on my ass which yeah, I don't yeah. want on camera. What instead happened, Chris, was, and I swear, the most manly thing, which is in one swift, straight, awesome kick, the door just whoosh, right open. Instant. First Amazing. go. And I was so annoyed I hadn't let them film. <laughs> I was so yeah, angry. Yeah, yeah. So I've never been more manly in all my life. That's it. That's that's the peak manliness for me. It's not getting any manlier. Yeah, that's so fair. There you go. So that is I everything for this week. Go on, oh, no, go on. I can't think of my most manly moment. I think I think of my smoothest nightclub moment, but I think I've told that story on here before about me requesting boys own in a nightclub. You remember that story? Uh, yeah, that sounds that sounds familiar. You can you can yeah, read if you if you can read it quickly, you can do so here for anyone who doesn't know. But this is just I think this isn't the most manly I've felt, but it's like the coolest. We but it still involves Boyzone, who are a nineties boy band, uh, from Ireland. Um we went into a nightclub and my friend had just read some wanky book about talking to women and he was banging on about how it you just needed confidence. And he went round to every table and like got phone numbers and that clubbing and that sort of thing has never really been my jam it's not something i'm comfortable with good at or in any way enjoy but he was like you got to be confident go up to someone and i was like nah 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 he was like just be cocky just be cocky and that's not me either and uh then we played boyzone me and another friend requested boyzone when the going gets tough uh it was a song by billy ocean that they covered um and these two girls were really enjoying it and I, the song ended and I was like, okay, be cocky. And I went over to them and I went, saw you were enjoying Boy Zone. And she went, yeah. And I went, I just, you know, me and my mate requested that. And she went, right. And I went, well, I just think I deserve a thank you. That's all. So she kissed me on the cheek and went, thank you. And I went, is that a proper thank you? And just walked off. Got back to my friend. He was like, what was that about? I was like, I don't know, dude. Like I was sweaty, horrible. And she marched right over to me, grabbed my face, gave me a proper kiss, and then just went, thank you, and then walked off. Awesome. That is good. Which is... It's a good story. But it still fundamentally is a story that starts with me and a friend requesting boys <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> Yeah, fundamentally, you never come out of that story smelling of roses, but that is pretty no, good. No, I love that. I'm, mate, I'm trying to find someone to go with me to their farewell tour. I'm, I'm not embarrassed at all about boys but I'm just saying the smoothest... Whether you are or aren't is irrelevant, been. Chris. No, no, no. Whether you are or aren't embarrassed is irrelevant. The fact is, you're not coming out of that story smelling of roses. No, 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 no. I, I think it really annoys me when people judge other people on their music taste. People could, should be able to listen to whatever music they want. Yeah, there's a handful but, of acts, though, that I'm going to judge you for. But <laughs> fundamentally, I just love that the smoothest I've ever been in a nightclub on a night out, that sort of scenario still involves a 90s boy band. That's fair. There you go. Right, we've downed our drinks. On that I've note, poured some vodka. I'm, I'm getting the up. vodka out now after this, so let's get cracking. That's and everything. also, they appear to they appear to have put the sofa, put the um, mattress away and left. So yeah, good right, for them. Let's crack on. Yeah. So that's everything for this week. Thanks for listening. We love you all. You're the best. Um, I've been Chris Billingham. I've been Dan Doolan. <laughs> I don't know. And we'll see you next time for an episode of Steven Universe called Sadie Killer.
And to continue this party, nothing but static.co.uk slash 151 to find out what happens after this. It's not going to be good. It's going to be messy. Bye. Bye. Bye.